All right, so we are on video nine for biology class, and we are going to talk about the different viruses and modes of replication that they have. We're gonna talk about the lytic and lysogenic, and we are also about to talk about the difficulty in eliminating viral viruses. So when we talk about viruses, we think about something that's harming our health, our just our well-being or maybe something that's also affecting animals but in this case we can talk about giant viruses so there are giant viruses known as giant nucleocytoplasmic large dna viruses and so what these do is they occupy extremely large genomes so for example microphage is in need of a giant virus um, it is a small double-stranded dna that requires the co infection of giant viruses and they really really heavily rely on the viral replication factory of the co-infecting giant virus and that is needed for their own proper replication one of the newly discovered family of viruses that we can talk about are the redondo viruses and this is just basically the circular dna of its genome and when we think viruses we can also say that they are no metabolic processes in the uh, virus or no anabolic process so as we were mentioned lytic and lysonic these are different modes of viral uh, viral reproduction so the lytic cycle the first step is the virus attaches to the cell via the tail fiber so we've talked about tail fibers before as well um, the second step is they inject capis compensis as we were saying, in the second part, they inject the capsid contact, which is in the DNA genome. The genome is then replicated and translated, and the autoassembly of the capsid proteins are then moved forward. Lysomes bacterium happens so that way the, the virus can be released. And when we talk about the lysonic cell cycle, well, yeah, the lysonic uh, cycle of the process of the viruses, the tail fiber is attached to the cell, it then is injected into the capsid contents, and then the virus genome is in the integrated prophage phase. So the mitotic cellular division comes after that, and then that's when the prophage is then emerged and it's being shooted out and it enters the lytic cycle. So why is it difficult nowadays to eliminate viral viruses? Like I said, it can be talked about in human form, animal form, or any kind of form, um, viruses affecting food as well. So one of the major things is viruses can mutate. So viruses are constantly changing and evolving, which can make it difficult to develop effective vaccines and treatments. As a result, some viral diseases become resistant to drugs and vaccines over time, which is why sometimes we need to get... Um, vaccines every six months, every 12 months, um, just so that way we can, our bodies can keep up um, with taking these vaccines and preventing us from contracting the virus. So the second thing is the lack of access to healthcare. In many parts of the world, people do not have access to healthcare, which can make it difficult to diagnose and treat these viral diseases. This can allow the virus to spread more easily and can make it harder to eliminate. Overall, eliminating viral viruses can be challenging due to the complex nature of viruses and the many factors that can influence their spread. However, advances in medical research and technology are constantly improving our ability to prevent, diagnose, and treat well viruses and efforts to eliminate these diseases. So that is all that we have to talk about for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and if you have any other questions or comments you can also leave them down below. Again, this was the different viruses and the modes of replication, the lytic and lysogenic, and the difficulty in eliminating viral diseases.